Welcome to another show day of Healthy Nasty Kitchen podcast. We all know this podcast is about baking, business, entrepreneurship, self-development and growth in general. I mean, I'm sure that you must have spent days questioning yourself, oh, is it going to be a good decision or was something that you just clicked? Okay, no, I go for it. Very, um, very real. It's patience. Everything is um, slow and that's the goodness of it. You need to understand this one, you need to work hard. For example, for me, I, I like self-growth, I like personal growth. It needs, to, it needs to start from your heart. So if you got that into the game, then you are unstop unstoppable. Awesome. Hi. Good morning. Nice to meet you, Emily. Emily, like you say? Yeah, Emily, yeah. Uh, that's spelled with the E at the end. I wasn't sure. With an I, yeah. I wasn't sure. So, let me welcome you to the Healthy Nasty Beat Kitchen podcast. It's amazing to be able to connect with people like you around the world who are bakers, entrepreneurs, business people, businesswomen in your case. And I'm super ecstatic today because I really love her. I really love your book, especially the cover. I think it goes super into what sourdough is. It looks like a simple artisan, beautiful crumb, beautiful colors. Just uh, introduce yourself to the audience and tell us what you do. Well, thank you. Um, that's very kind of you. I appreciate that. Uh, well, my name is Emily and um, I wrote the book Artisan Sourdough Made Simple. Uh, I love baking, I love bread, I love eating bread, <laughs> um, uh, love writing, and um, I'm also a mom. I have three boys who uh, keep me very, very busy. And uh, that's it, just, just cooking, baking, writing, photographing food, and just constantly playing around, I guess, and see, see what, what, what comes of it, you know? Okay, and to start with, I have two questions for you now. Yeah. Concerning what you just said, how did you start baking? And how did you start your job and show how to bake? Sure, so it's really um, interesting actually, because I didn't wake up one day and say, you know, I'm gonna start baking sourdough. Um, I was actually following a blog called uh, Fig Jam and Lime Cordial. She's an Aussie blogger actually, her okay. name is Celia. I love her, she's, she's fabulous. And she blogged about a lot of things, but specifically to sourdough, she, her approach was just so laid back and practical and she's, you know, just very, um, very real. And her enthusiasm was um, what really drew me in. I'm like, what, what is she baking? Why is she so excited about this bread? I really, I really want to try this, you know? And, um, I thought at the time, I'm like, I don't have time to bake bread. I love bread, but I, you know, I can't do this, whatever. But I ended up contacting her and I said, you know, uh, do you think this is something that I could do? And this, that, the other thing. And she ends up sending me some of her um, sourdough starter. So her starter is called Priscilla. And okay. she took a little portion and she dried it up and then, you know, crumbled it into little white flakes and mailed it to me from Sydney. Really? That's amazing. Yeah. That's how long exactly. ago? Exactly. That was that was back in 2011, I think. That's awesome. So it was a while ago. Mm -hmm. And um, so the starter shows up at my house. I'm like, okay, great. Now what? I got I to gotta do this, you know? So I just followed her directions. And it was really how she presented the information. It was just super approachable. And I was able to do it. I was able to bake a loaf. And it wasn't as hard as I thought or, or whatever, or even time consuming. And uh, that's how I got stuck into sourdough. That's what really sparked the journey and I loved it. It was just um, really rewarding to eat the loaves afterwards and just the whole process was really therapeutic. So I was hooked from, from that moment on. And so where are you located right now? I'm in New York. I'm okay. on Long Island. Yeah, so yeah. from Sydney to New York. And yeah. You just started baking sourdough. And uh, yeah. in the other case, how did you start showing people how to make sourdough. What was the spark? It was something that you really felt uh, you needed to share? Yeah, um, at the time when I was baking, I wanted more knowledge. I wanted to learn more, I had a lot of questions. And so I would go online and look 
and my answers were not being satisfied. It was, I would jump onto forums and I felt like everything was mid thought or too advanced or even intermediate. Mm -hmm. And at the time, no other bloggers were really talking about sourdough. There were no. really not many recipes out there. So I felt really stuck and I said, all right, well, if I can't find this information out myself, I'm going to just be the information. <laughs> so awesome. I just kind awesome. of testing and testing and so then i started um i wrote uh, a post it's called sourdough bread a beginner's guide and that was basically my way into the world to to share with everybody hey look if you want to get into sourdough start here this is going to strip you back and take you back to the very beginning um to give you sort of a launching pad to get started so that's that's the article that i wrote and that's what really inspired me to get it out there because it was a lot of it was for myself. I really needed the information, but eventually it ended up being a very helpful tool for others who needed a starting point. Well, uh, I really believe in this theory that people say, if you want to learn something, start teaching it. Yes, yes. And it's very true. Yeah. It's very true. I found the same. Like I struggled with sourdough for probably 15 years. And oh, the, wow. day, the day that I started teaching, and I'm trying to understand the concept of it and the patience behind it, that's where I actually become more successful. And um, can I ask you just uh, practically, what platform did you use to share your, uh, did you use a uh, software for uh, web designing that helped you to do it, WordPress, uh, Squarepay, Squarespace, uh, Shopify, what, what did you use for people that might um, want to embrace the same career? Yeah, no, um, I... Um, I'm still on WordPress actually. Awesome. So that, that was my blog basically. It was pretty early on in my blogging career that that post was put up. Well, so, how did yeah. you find the courage? How did you find the courage to put yourself out there? I think that's I a wasn't good thinking problem. about it. I was, I wasn't thinking about it really. It was, um, I, it was a creative outlet for me. I think it was mm -hmm. just, there was no, it, it was just something that had to be done. I had to express myself in, in some way. And it was really more subconscious. I didn't really wake up one day and say, you know, I want to be a bread baker or I want to be a blogger. It was kind of like, I have this, this passion and it needs to go somewhere. So if it was going to come through just photography or writing, it was going to get out somehow. And um, I think at the time, you know, blogging was starting to become popular. And that's, I think what inspired me at the time because it was up and coming well i think you should be pr very proud of the work that you've done i haven't had the chance to read your book yet but i ordered my copy and i hoped it would arrive <laughs> in time for this interview so I, I had some at least i had some argument and i had to watch and i had to look at it but you need to be very proud because i am the founder of a few sourdough uh, groups on facebook and i also have my two websites about sourdough and i see people mentioning you so many times and uh, i'm going to search of course the people and and it's fantastic to see people there I started sharing a long way ago in 2011 2012 like you did and the population is still embracing your job the the job that you did the sharing that you shared it's unbelievable well done you should be very proud thank you Thank you. That means a lot. I appreciate that. On this, on this uh, thing, what did you think was the main obstacle for you and for the people that you wanted to find solution for? Ooh, with sourdough? Yes, of course. I think with sourdough, uh, there's a lot of apprehension in the beginning, or at least that's the feedback that I get from, from people. Um, it always starts with, it looks really cool, but... I really want to get into it. I don't know where to start. There's a lot of fear and sort of hesitancy about it. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, look, you know, if you're excited about something, just, just don't worry about that kind of stuff. And I'm not saying that from a place that, oh, it's so easy and this, that, everything. Just be like a kid. Just do it. Just, yeah. just find a recipe, sit down and do it. You know, there's so much information out there. It, it can become confusing and overwhelming, but I really think to cut through the noise, you have to find somebody, um, a blogger, an author, whoever that really resonates with you. You know, of after course. you read their, their work, if you feel it, just stick with them, mm -hmm. stick with their methods, stick with what they do for a little while and just jump in and just forget about everything else and just give yourself some credit and just have fun with it. Oh, and I yeah. think that's the biggest obstacle. I think the person is the biggest obstacle, just, just that initial fear. Um, because it, it's quite fun once you get over that hump. Yeah. Did you, did you get it straight away? This is just a personal question. Did you get it straight away? Uh, 
I did. I did. And you know what? I messed it up after that. I had <laughs> the best run of beginner's luck. My bread came out so good. It was really, it, and I could say this because it sucked afterwards after that. <laughs> it was beautiful. It was like bubbly crust, thin. The inside was nice and and just like spongy and open and everything. And then what I did after that was I started reading what everybody else was doing. Yeah, and I started, thing. I started to mess around with my method. I was like, oh, let me, let me cherry pick this method from so-and-so and, -so and let, me, let me ferment the dough at this temperature like so-and-so. -and, -so. and I messed up and my bread came out so bad because I was all over the place. I wasn't grounded. I didn't realize that all the steps were connected in some mm -hmm. way. And what I was doing was just wrecking my flow totally. So I had to, you know, step down <laughs> after that and, and go back to the beginning, go back to basics and, and really fine tune what I was doing. But to answer your question, yes. And then I screwed it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, a, it's a, as you said, it's going back to the basics. We need to understand that bread baking with a sourdough method has been baked for 8,000 years. Yeah. We haven't started yeah. yesterday. So yeah. it must have been easy. Come on, if yeah. my grandmothers used to make it, they were no bakers and they used to bake almost once a week. You know, I know right, they, right. there are some stories about, I, I come from Italy, as you probably might have noticed. Yeah. And um, I know that my grandma used to tell me that they used to make the dough in big batches, batches. And the baker would come across the street, collect the bread dough that the ladies would have crafted bake it for mm -hmm. them and bring them back to them that's how that's it used awesome. to be made oh and that's and, great and they said the bigger the loaf the better would it be because it yeah. will last longer so they would do uh, there's a very famous bread from altamura in basilicata in the south of italy which is made at least five kilos five kilos big chunks of bread it's loaf that's it's, amazing uh, yeah so and they and they actually ship it all over italy because it's so big, the long shelf Love life it. is huge. Is there That's anything amazing. that you? Is there anything that you really like baking that gives you satisfaction? That you like mixing? That you like baking? That you like eating? It doesn't have um, to be wrong. I, I know. See, this is a problem. So <laughs> <laughs> right now, and um, for a while, I would say I love focaccia. Yeah. I love it. I love sourdough focaccia. I love it for so many reasons. I love touching the dough, just, you know, sticking your fingers in it and poking the dough around. Love that part. Popping the bubbles. Um, but I also think focaccia is um, highly underrated. It's, it's a fantastic beginner's bread. Fantastic because you don't have to do much to no. it and you don't have to shape it. You don't have to score it. You don't have to, you know, sort of shape do much mm -hmm. exactly and it turns out beautiful oh. and um it's great for sandwiches it's great for picking at it's great for soups all kinds of things so i bake focaccia quite often my kids love focaccia and um you know it's, it's fun to play around with different toppings or whatever you want to put on it but i oh. find simple is really nice and uh that, that's my favorite right now yeah have you have you noticed with your kids how easily focaccia gets in their belly compared to bread because <laughs> well, with, with the regular bread they don't eat the crust they no. go in there like little little monsters and they just eat around it and they ditch the crust <laughs> like, do you know how long it took me to make that you know <laughs> um yeah so that you could do a whole kids? Show. my kids ask. are two nine and eleven Oh, yeah. So I got three kids too. I have, Are you years, yeah, I have a 12 years yeah. old, a 10 years old and a six years old. Yeah. Oh, okay. So about the same. Except yeah, exactly. Just, more. just, uh, I was about to say, and to, is your background Italian? Yes. Okay. Yes. My, uh, yes. My father's family is from Sicily. Okay. And uh, my mother's family is from France. So oh, really? Yeah. That's why Emily with the E at the end. Emily. Exactly. Probably. Yes. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fine. beautiful line and um, thank you you're welcome so concerning the focaccia i really love focaccia too and i started baking with focaccia when i was 19 i was in rome and i was working yeah. in this fine dining restaurant as a chef because i started very young being as a chef i worked for 22 years as a chef 
cultivating my passion for baking that was born in Rome where my head chef was baking with sourdough and we would make panettone, different kinds of bread, focaccia. Mm-hmm. And I've fallen in love because, you know, he yeah. was so passionate. Unfortunately, now he's not with us anymore. But he was so passionate, passionate that he would tell you, okay, Giuseppe, in the morning, you need to take the sourdough, the pasta madre, because he used to use the solid yeah. one. Take it out, keep it in a warm place. When he doubles, I'll be back. But in case I'm not back, make sure that you go and feed it. Okay, okay. Yeah. And if, if you would mess it up, he would lose his mind. It's just, it's just, just a baby. <laughs> it was his baby. It was his baby. Yeah, yeah. So I've learned that, and it's fantastic. In your baking career, what would you think is the step that made you nail your bread every time now? The most important part of baking for you? Hmm. That is a really good question. I think generally speaking, um, the answer to that is letting go. Hmm. I think I, at some point, whether it was, you know, trying to meet a deadline or, or write an article, whatever, you put a lot of pressure on yourself to get your bread to look a certain way, to taste a certain way, to be a certain way. And I found that the more I push, the harder it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, generally speaking, once I started to say, look, you know, I know what the basic principles are, just, just let it be what it is. Um, it start, the whole process started to flow a little bit better. And also just to have faith in what I was doing versus what other bakers were doing. Mm-hmm. Everybody has a different method that sort of works for them. So once I started to really embrace that that was my style or my thing and just let go, things came together. That was sort of a big turning point for me um, in terms of baking and, and how I presented my style to other people. Did you struggle with patience? Because I yes did. and no. <laughs> yes did. and no, so absolutely. Patient. Did you find that sourdough kind of tells you who you are as a person? Oh, like, yeah. If you go back to patience, right, you know, it's either, you know, hurry up, the dough's not ready or whatever the thing is, or, or perhaps you like the fact that you make a dough and you let it rest overnight, you don't have to deal with it, that kind of thing. I, I love that method. Hard. Yeah, yeah. That's the best method. I think that's the method that I do. I think just because it just fits my schedule and my life really. Um, but I've found sourdough to be very reflective of your, your patience, your persistence, your, your passion, all that kind of stuff. It's like a mirror almost. Oh, um, but yeah, definitely. sometimes I wouldn't get it or I would get it and, you know, change stuff. But that's the thing. You always keep going back to it to figure it out somehow. And that's what I think is so magical about sourdough. So uh, totally agree. Yeah. And I think ph- philosophically he's a very good teacher. He's a very mm. good teacher. He teaches you so really many is. things. Uh, talking in values, for example, patience, resilience, yeah. as you said, persistent, perseverance, because, you know, many people mess it up for many years and yeah. they struggle yeah. and they go back to it and they struggle and then they find good advisors like you that tell, okay, make the dough, forget about it, or go to sleep, wake up and yeah, see yeah. what changed in the morning. And I can tell you by experience, it works. Yeah, it works. It do, it, do the dough at night so you don't care about it. It just flows with you, with universe, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And in the morning, you have a bubbly, beautiful dough ready to be shaped, you know, and uh, used. Is there any right? Uh, and it, and if it's if it's too bubbly or overproofed, you make focaccia. See, exactly. It's, it's, exactly. You win. That's, you that's win either way. Actually, actually, I think we should give that advice to people. And I never yeah. did. And I find it's a wonderful thing that you said start with focaccia because if you mess it up at least you'll learn how to understand when the dough is ready for be baked for be shaped yes absolutely well done the the thing with sourdough too is because it is a process that takes time but Mm -hmm. not necessarily time from you you need to practice Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. it's the repetition and the and the failure and all that kind of stuff but you know look it's hard when it takes two days to make a loaf or whatever the case is but like you said you know if you could get in there and just touch the dough or if it you know see what it looks like at different stages and be able to salvage the dough and turn it into something still edible it's always a lesson always always well how often do you bake i usually bake about two to three times a week right now Um, it changes though with the season it changes with schedules um that kind of thing. Summer is a little bit different, um, but we're going into winter here now. So we're baking a lot more. Of um, I do the overnight method. I double everything, sometimes triple, and then 
um, just bake it all in the morning. That's, okay. that's my, my go-to method. Yeah, yeah. Would you be able to share just very quickly a uh, basic recipe they use? Sure. So if I'm baking, you know, like an artisan style bowl, you know, nice yeah. thin crust, that kind of thing. I usually do my go-to recipe is 500 grams of flour with um, 350 grams of water. Okay. And then I use 50 grams of starter. This is with an overnight rise. Okay. Yes. So if I was doing it during the day, maybe I'll add more starter, but yeah. 50 grams of starter, nine grams of uh, really nice fine sea salt. Mm-hmm. And that's it. That's and I basically- it. That's it. It's really it. And I mix everything at once. Yeah, right? me too. I know there's like a lot of controversy over when to add the yeah. salt. Or I, I get a lot of emails about, you know, why are you adding the salt in the beginning and this, that, and that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. But it's just how I do it. I've had great results with it. Um, and I don't forget to add the salt later well, on. Because and that's happens, such a big thing. <laughs> You know, and it's horrible. Bread without salt is horrible. So um, whatever. So I add everything together. I usually, I'll let it rest. Again, it really depends on what I'm doing. If I'm cleaning the kitchen, I'll let it rest for an hour or whatever. You know, if I'm, if I want to go to sleep, maybe 30 minutes, it, it just depends. Um, then I'll come back after the dough is mixed. I'll work it a little bit in the bowl just so I could feel it. Yeah. Sometimes there's crusty bits at the bottom, whatever. You yeah. got to get those. Um that's it. And then I just cover it and let it rise overnight. If I'm in the mood, maybe I'll come and do a few stretch and folds yeah. or my kids. It's not like necessary. To do yeah. But it's not necessary. It's not necessary. Gluten it's develops not. anyway. Salt doesn't affect the yeast. And, uh, it's, just fine. it's fine. There's a big debate about that. People yeah. really don't, people really like to add the salt and, and you know, whatever later on. And that's cool too. That's fine. I like, um, I, I think we should write a book. It's called the no fast sourdough. Where yeah. You know, it's no, a, no nonsense, a, sourdough. That's yeah. that's. Uh, Why do we? Need and I to think make... with any craft that you start, you can make it as simple or as I don't want to say complicated because that's not what I mean, but um, more involved, specific, with more yeah. effort, specific as you go because it's your thing, mm-hmm. you know. Of course, um, you can control the little shades and shadows yeah. in your sourdough, your baking, any craft. You can be precise to the milligram if you want to. Exactly. Exactly. to the hounds so to the millimeters of water they use milliliters of water they use and the temperature they use is your starter your flour your water the rice the room temperature yeah. you know you can be fussy about all of that but if you are a beginner what's the point of worry about those won't change the end result for you it won't <laughs> it won't and you want to know what it goes back to what i was saying in the beginning it goes back to that fear if i told you you had to have your temperature at, a, at your flour at a certain temperature and your water at a certain temperature guess what they're not going to make my no, recipe they will never start you know, it's no. too involved it's i wouldn't even want to do that because you know start it, spending again, money it's, on so, tools right right and the amount of tools and it depends on why the baker wants to bake do they want to do it to feed their family are they doing it for fun are they doing it to to post on instagram like it, it just depends yeah. you know what their what their reasoning is of, of all the bread that you make a week is it all going to be a work project or is something just for the family just for the sake of baking for home usually it's a little bit of both okay. um so right now i'm really into sandwich bread love oh, sandwich bread love, 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 love how do you make i know love. probably you can't share it but do you use fat and sugar in there it depends on the bread, right? Okay. So I have a few different versions. Um, I have a chapter on that in the book and then a few on the blog. But um, yeah, so I have one made with plain flour mm-hmm. um, and butter awesome. and a awesome. little bit of sugar. And mm-hmm. it's delicious. It's a really tender, soft crumb. Everyone that I make that for, they really like that one. And they think it's the butter. Then I have another one that doesn't use butter. It's a combination of uh, bread flour and all purpose with just a little bit of oil. Mm-hmm. Completely different bread, yeah. crispier crust, chewier, totally different, the, the two back and forth. Um, each really good in their own, in their own right, but maybe the, the all purpose one is good with, with jam. It's more, it, it's not like a brioche, but it's got more butter. And the other yes. one may be better for, for sandwiches. Um, but those are right now. I'm really into that, so I'll oh, do how like beautiful three or four. to make sandwich loaves. It's amazing. Love it. Do you use the team with the lead? I actually don't own one. How about that? I want one. The Pullman loaf. I actually don't even own one. Um, so you make it into a plum cake. To... What's that? You make it into the plum cake. Yeah. Thing? Yeah. 
So it comes out um, with the two little lips at the side. Beautiful. It, com it comes out. And I should get the one with the top because it'll be easier to cut the crust off for the kids. Nice. Because yeah. they don't eat it. But um, yeah, maybe But Christmas, you see, you think another lesson just right now. You, If you want to yeah. make things, you don't need to spend bucks in tools and stuff, in trays, yeah. in Pullman loaves, things. Just do whatever you have. People tell me, ah, what do I need to buy to mix it? Your yeah. hand? A bowl that I'm yeah. sure you have already <laughs> at home? Let's see? How right. do I bake it? You know, I've started baking on a flat tray. That's it. And I know yeah. the bread wouldn't rise because the some ovens at home are very dry. They don't hold enough steam for the crust. Absolutely. Oil. So yesterday, I went on Facebook, Marketplace, and I was looking, do you remember those uh, convention ovens that they used to be in the glass container? Is it a countertop thing? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I bought one just to try. I want to show people that for 20 bucks, I bought that one. I want to see if it Ooh. holds enough steam. If it doesn't, I'm going to use the cloche, the bottom, which yeah, is yeah. the container, as a, as a cover. So I can show the people how the bread opens in the oven and stuff. So you just need to research. And you don't have to spend lots of money on, on uh, ingredients. Tools, machineries, is not necessary. Yeah. Not necessary. No, it's really not. Um, a friend of mine, she actually, instead of using the, the pan with the tin, she just puts a sheet pan on top. Yeah. And she weighs it down with two cans of Italian plum tomatoes, the big cans. Yes. Puts it right in. This, like, really? Yeah, yeah so, it works. Of course it does. As long as you can hold 70% of the steam into the oven or around the bread. Exactly. That's enough. That's enough. So I I just, you know what? I love tips like that too. Those yes. are like the real tips. Those are tips from real home bakers, tried yeah. and true. Those, those are the ones that I really love. So. Yeah, you just need to think. You can do everything. Yeah. You just need to yeah. think. And uh, uh, yes. is there anything else that you like to bake? If it's not focaccia that you really want to challenge yourself? Um, yes, everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Um, I'm always pushing myself with just, you know, your regular style loaf because, not regular style, artisan boule, you know, um, because I feel like mine, mine always come out different every time. Um, you know, being more consistent with, with certain things might produce, you know, a more consistent loaf. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, I guess that and um, just, I really like to just take sourdough and morph it into whatever I'm in the mood for. So in the book, you'll see, like I do sourdough bagels, sourdough English muffins. Like I'm really into to really um, evolving the starter and making it work to do other things, not just your typical bread, because that really interests me. So. Well, I, I, launched, I launched a hashtag a few months ago, which is sourdough is a method, yeah. not a flavor. The yeah okay understand. so if you mm -hmm. if you want to start posting with that you better you you you're more than welcome to because i i think that you actually sharing the concept already sourdough is not yeah. a flavor it's the method of baking and you can make everything yeah. that needs to prove a rise with that culture very simple yeah yes i, I agree and thank you i will do that oh no problem sourdough <laughs> is a method not a flavor and yeah. uh, uh do you find that people are, I don't know what's the tradition in America or New York, but do they prefer a milder flavored sourdough or they go through something very acidic and sour? Uh, I think it really depends. Um, I know um, just from feedback through emails and comments that I've received, uh, Many bakers want that typical uh, San Francisco style sourdough that's typically more sour. Um, I haven't had anyone in New York or where I'm from ask for a more sour flavor. It's not really that popular here. You don't see any sourdough bakeries or, or it's not really served in restaurants. Um, so I haven't had any sort of queries about it, but I think in general, people want it to have some kind of tang because they do expect sourdough to taste somewhat sour. And if it's not, they're kind of like, wait, what is this? But then you have other people who don't want sour at all. They want sourdough, but they don't want the tang. I get that a lot too, um, which Especially you can achieve with sour. Yeah. So that's a little bit of both, a little mm -hmm. bit of both, I would say. Have you ever thought to open a bakery? Yes and no, yes. Um, 
So we ha- we have a restaurant actually Do you? Um, where we bake bread. What's I don't the name bake of the your bread. It, it's called Sfolia. Sfolia, um, beautiful. Sfolia, yes, an Italian restaurant, and we have a beautiful baker there who does everything, and he does um, beautiful homemade bread and and everything, uh, tortas and cakes, and he's he's magic. He's he's I don't know what he does down there, but he, he he's a he's a brilliant baker, and. The idea of a bakery sounds very romantic and wonderful, but because I know the business side of the restaurant, although I don't run it personally, um, my husband does, the business side, it's intense. It is really, really intense. It's a lot of work. Um, it's a it's 24-7 a job. Yeah, it's a, a volume. Lot of volume. Bakery are volumes-based businesses. So that is the only, and, and then the hours, right? Bakery hours is, is a little bit different. So the idea sounds great. Maybe one day, or maybe uh, maybe a pop-up bakery or a micro bakery, something like that's more my speed. Um, but yeah, because I think good bre- bread, great bread, people people love it. People, yeah. there's bakeries in Brooklyn here. People line up, lines out the door to spend $12 for a loaf, you know? There's, there's a need for it, for sure. We are missing, we are missing it. We are missing the bread, for sure. We're eating so much crap. Yeah. Prepared. Yeah. It's uh, unbelievable. It's we just and once it. you have the real thing, it's, it's so hard to go back. And I know that sounds really cliche. You know, once you make it yourself, you'll never, it's just, it's two it's different true. worlds. It's true. It really is. Yeah. And for me, I, I can tell you that I'm, I'm really dreaming to be self, to be able to be self-sustained. Of course, Australia is different from America. We have more room so you can buy a piece of land. Yeah. Build a crappy home but still have your orchards, your veggie pats, your chickens. So I started, you know, I started from baking at home, having my little meal, where I meal my flour in the mock meal. Yeah. And, uh, and I have my chickens. So I have my bench over there, my panettone, though I'm ready to make some post for people to learn some recipes to make panettone, which is very simple. It's a myth that's complicated. You know, I'm so glad that you're saying that because that was actually on my list of things uh, that I wanted to try and do this Christmas or, or this, you know, holiday season is do the panettone. So. Look, I'll do something for you. If you send me your address, I will send you my molds. I got some molds over there behind the books, some panettone molds. You can't see them. Let me get them for you. I can send them to you. Oh, this oh. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me for the two. For the mess no it's fine so these are ones so i yeah. i couldn't find any in australia okay last year when i wanted to do it so my ex-wife was in italy with the children and i said you know what i'm gonna order some from a manufacturer in italy i order a thousand molds between colomba you know the colomba yes the easter shaped like a pigeon panettone style bread yeah. And the panettone. So I ordered 500 Columbus molds and 500 panettones. And I said, I can't pay 30 bucks for three molds. I'm not going to yeah, do yeah. that. So, right, right. So I imported 500 of this one to Italy to be able to, to deliver that in Australia. But I'd be very, very happy to send you a few to New York. If you, you can send me an email with your address later on. I'll be happy to oh, that. So you can try. Really nice. So you can Thank you. try. Thank you. My I would pleasure. love to try. Oh, it's panettone. It's so rewarding and the, it's not rewarding because it's a two days work because it's just the mixing yeah it's because of the flavor this and the smell, smell. The smell. Oh my oh. Goodness. i know i can smell it right now <laughs> while you're talking it, it, about it it, wa- it warms different. up your heart it warms up it your does heart. that's it why does. you don't have to do it every day you can only do no Christmas. no and i think also it, it's um with that specifically it brings a little bit of home to you you know especially with that style of bread that that smell those flavors um that you know the candied fruit all that oh. it's, it's really you're good. Sicilian, so you know, candied fruit, it's your style. Candied your fruit, candy. I know. Do you I find know. that your that your children prefer sweeter bread to more acidic bread? Because I found myself, yeah. my, my kids hate when it's too fermented. Of course, of mm. course. They love everything sweet. And my oldest son, he's, it's funny because he really, um, he notices the difference big time between store-bought bread and homemade bread and he'll really say he's like mom he's like this this other bread gives me a stomach ache or this other bread you know it just doesn't taste like yours or whatever 
and I'll, you know, I'll take any compliment because kids will, will straight up tell you like it is, yes. <laughs> you know, um, but they really know. So I, I value their opinion in, in some sense because, um, you know, it's good. It's homemade. They like it. It's very true. They blunt with their feedbacks. Yeah, blunt. Exactly. They have no heart for that. It's crap. It's crap. <laughs> it's good. It's delicious. Yeah, and they want more. Exactly. Well, they won't yeah. tell you if it's good because they finish it. <laughs> yeah, with the crust yes. all over the place. And I've seen, I've, I've che- of course, I've checked your social media and stuff, and you are into the discard use at the moment. Okay, what yeah. would you like to share concerning that? I think many people are interested in that. I don't use discard, I don't yeah. need to, but there are many people yeah. that feed a lot to start and they have some leftovers. Uh, what do you do with it? So, it, this is a really great um, subject you bring up because a lot of bakers don't need to use their discard, they don't don't have any, and then the ones that do. um, I guess my number one piece of advice I would like to share with people is that not all discard is created equal, right? Mm -hmm. So you might have starter that's been sitting in the fridge for a really long time and you're gonna feed it and you're about to, you know, you scoop off that top layer and you go to make pancakes with it, let's say. But um, sometimes that starter, it's really acidic and it smells and it's gross and you go to use it in something sweet and it tastes awful. And I've done that. I've done that when I first started because it was like, oh, discard. I want to make this recipe that I saw. And I'm like, wasn't using my head Mm -hmm. that it just, I mean, just taste the batter. It's disgusting. Um, So I always like to say, look, if you want to use a discard recipe, whether it's mine or somebody else's, look at that discard first. Think. It's going to be a little sour and tangy. That's fine to use. But if it's got mold on it, if it's been sitting in the fridge forever, if it's soup, if it's like got that gray liquid at the top, just don't use it. It's not worth it. In fact, it will waste more ingredients if you use it for cake or brownies or whatever. Just throw that half a cup out. It's really just not worth it. So always examine the starter to make sure it's in good condition uh, before using it if you want to have success in uh, sweet recipes savory you have a little bit more play but just you know give it a, give it a look before you use it yeah it gives you more margin um, and then that's it you can make whatever you want you yeah. know yeah is there anything that you're working on at the moment any other book um <laughs> yes that you can um, share some uh, no <laughs> i have support. i have i have some ideas of what i'm doing um for my next project and i'm, I'm like I'm in the simmering stage <laughs> where, yeah, you're where I'm, the waters. Like, I'm testing the waters um, and I can't really share yet, it's okay. but um, when, when it's time, um, I think it'll be something that, that uh, people really enjoy. Cause again, it's coming from that no nonsense approach of being able to do even more with, mm-hmm. with sourdough. So. Uh, I like, uh, you seem very easygoing. You seem very genuine as well. I think uh, you're gonna do great in the sharing world. I think you you do that, you no, know, with a with a second need, which is profit. Of course, we do we do everything yeah. because we need a bit of sustainability, financially right. wise as well. But you're not driven by that. I can tell. I can tell you're more driven by. Of course, I want to help people, and uh, you really seem genuine. I like it. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. I I think also too, um, a lot of failure has gotten me, I don't want to say to where I am because, you know, I'm I'm here right now, you know, it's more trial and error. And if you're really passionate about something, um, you know, just, just jump in. Like I said before, it's, it's just, uh, it's fun. Sourdough is fun. Sourdough is very fun. It's a lot of fun. It's not a, a stressful thing. It's actually very stress relieving. And it's been so great to see so many people all over the world taking up sourdough during all of these lockdowns and isolation and all of this kind of thing. People really got into it, not just baking bread, it's sourdough specifically, which I think is really interesting. It's really, it's having its moment yeah. um, worldwide, it's, which is, it like blows my mind. It blows it's my mind. It's amazing. It really is. And I got to tell you, the, People would write me emails saying how this craft, the craft of sourdough, got them through missing their mom or their grandmother they couldn't see. They would over Zoom, you know, take mixed dough together. That to me is why I do this. And another another great um, story, was, there was a, a kindergarten class in New mm-hmm. Zealand making my bread, the recipe together, sourdough. <laughs> That one melted my heart. Like I got goosebumps. I saw it on Instagram and I'm like, it's just, it's more than just bread. It's just, it's, it's a beautiful Unity. thing. 
It's community. It, it. It, it's it community. really is. It really is in so many different forms. So. And I agree with you. That happened, something very similar to me yesterday. I went and picked up my youngest son at the primary school. And one of his schoolmates, classmates, comes to me and said, I remember you. I said, yeah, where do you remember me from? Yeah, last year, I used to come to the kindy. You used to make something with us on the benches. Oh. Uh, it was, and you just brought that back. It was so sweet. What did you remember? We were making bread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was delicious. So sweet. And, the, and they often, and I forget about it, but that's the true meaning of it. You know, you setting memories into your answer. And that's the most successful way to teach a beginner. He worked wonders. And I was so happy to be able to teach people and see them successfully straight away from a 15 years old to 81 years old. Unbelievable. It's great. It's great. So not only did you bring those people together in a time of being apart, they're learning a life skill. That's the mm -hmm. other thing. Going back to what you mentioned about being sustainable. Yeah. I mean, bread, I mean, growing things in the garden is one thing, but bread is like, that's, that's life. You know, that's, mm -hmm. it's been a part of society. I mean, for how long, you know? Um, so that's really cool. That's great. That must've been really fulfilling. So. Emily, yeah. thank you so much for being, before we wrap her up, I would like to, to ask you the last question, sure. which is if there is something in the world that you would like to be remembered for, what would it, what would it be? Ooh, this is a good one. This, you, this is a, sure, this, this is, is, a, this tough is why one. it's late for the little, for the last one. This is a tough one. Well, I'm going to say this. Uh, um, I think I would like to be remembered more for how I make people feel than necessarily my bread or my words or my recipes or my pictures or whatever it is, because I think those things over time fade, but um, if feelings don't, right? Mm -hmm. So if I could change or inspire or connect people, communities, families, whoever, through that, through that feeling. Um, that's what I would like to be remembered for, because I think that is um, sustainable through anything. I think feelings are resilient. So You're definitely that's a writer. It. You speak with emotions. <laughs> You're definitely a writer. Hey. I can tell. Hey. I can tell. I have the same uh, attitude usually. You know, emotions are very important. Emotions they are. are very important. They, and, they are. I had a last question that it just slips off my mind. Yeah. But anyway. I could talk all day. I, I, and, and, and I loved it. And I loved it. I think you have pickups, children today to do as well. No. Well, well, no. What time is it? No, I have one baby sleeping and two, two kids coming home on the bus in an hour. So awesome. we're good. It's easy. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Well, we don't have to wrap it up. I thought you had to leave. No, it was only only in the morning and the evenings, but those are my morning. I mean, with our time difference. It's, of course, it's uh, it's 5 a.m. now. I don't even know how you're doing five. this. You're going to have more coffee after this. <laughs> yes, for sure. I'll keep uh, drinking. It's, a, it's because <laughs> of you want to way. share with the Italian way. Huh? It's because you want to share, you know. It's, a, it's not to have content is because I really need the people. We are so lucky. I feel so privileged to be able to work, to live in such a, uh, a time, in such an age where we are surrounded by technology and we all just talk bad about it. When look what we're doing, you are in New York, I'm in Adelaide in Australia. Yeah. We're trying to nourish knowledge to people. And this is how technology is meant to be used. Forget yeah. about Google that tracks you because he wants to sell you the right thing. They are trying right, to help right. in businesses and of course they help themselves. Don't worry about Facebook tracking everything that you do because they want to show you the right ads. They are trying to help people that are selling those ads. You know, everything right. is a meaning, especially in a financial world. But focus on the good things and why not starting with baking, with artisan sourdough and, um, you know, the, your beautiful book for beginners. And uh, just to share again the title, because I think it really uh, um, holds on to a beautiful meaning. Um, yeah, so the title is Artisan Sourdough Made Simple. And it really is simple. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a beginner's guide to uh, handcrafted bread. That's, mm. that's really what it is. It's a, it's a it. no-not practical guide, but true to the meaning. And, um, you know, because the words 
easy and simple and, you know, no stress. That's those, those phrases are thrown around a lot in the culinary world. They're, they're in every recipe and a lot of times they fall flat. So um, when I set out to do this book, I said to myself, I'm not going to put my name on it unless the, it, it really is a, a practical, simple Mm-hmm. method but but not only that it was the method that i did at home so i didn't have to try to be anything it was just no. what i was doing it was you. I, You'll be right and, and i thought that it would resonate with other people that you know were busy families or working or whatever and wanted to fit something you know a, an ancient craft if you want to mm-hmm. call it that into modern day and when, that's when did you arrived. write and publish that book so the book was published in 2017 okay so a few years ago And I wrote, you know, I spent the, the year prior to that writing that book. But I will say that book had been in my head for like five years before I even started writing it. So when I sat down to actually get those words on paper, it was, I don't want to say easy, but Slowly. the flow to do that was already there. It was, it was like the, the, the tracks were already laid down. So that was... Um, That was, that was nice because I didn't really have to, I didn't have to do a ton of testing because it was just stuff that I was already making at home and, and thoughts that were replaying in my head for so many years. So the timing was right for that book to that's come out good, when it did. That's a, and then, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. So, so that's like the, the approach that I'm taking now with my next project. I'm just kind of letting it simmer. And, you know, there's pressure because sourdough is popular now and, you know, people Everybody's want more and that kind of thing. But you got to roll on your own timeline. Exactly. Exactly. Patience yeah. is the biggest reward you can have. The more, oh, yeah. there's a beautiful quote. Uh, you probably know him. Gary Vaynerchuk. He's in New York. Hmm. He's a yep. marketer. But he, he says okay. a lot. The person that will be able to hold the breath the longest at the end will win. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very true. True. It's very true. true. It's very true. It takes a lot of discipline, a lot of discipline. And when I first started, even with baking, like I didn't like to be a disciplined baker. I like to, I'm very, I'm kind of spontaneous in terms of my creativity. Like when I want to write, if I'm in the car, I always have something to write with, something to write on and I'll just go with it. And the same thing with bread, you know, I, I, in the beginning, I didn't really have a schedule. I would just start making the dough whenever but it goes back to that discipline that really hones in your creativity. So you can really um, hold your breath the longest and you can really, you start to mature a little bit. You're not kind of like all over the place like I was. And I still am. I got to be honest with you because I like it. It's fun. Um, but yeah, you know. I think it's beautiful. Baking is so beautiful. How it did is. you publish your book? Self-published? No, no. I have a, a publisher, uh, oh. Page Street Publishing. Awesome. Uh, this is actually my second book. Artisan Sourdough is my second cookbook. Uh, my first cookbook, The Clever Cookbook, came out about a year before the bread book. Mm. That book had nothing to do with bread. That okay. book focused on practical, stress-free meals, weeknight meals. Because mm-hmm. in addition to bread, I love to cook. I like to yeah. make meals that you eat with the bread, you know, like soup and salad and sauces and that kind of stuff. So that was my sort of debut book. And okay. then once that was finished, I knew I had to write the bread book. And that's sourdough's where my focus is at right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's uh, interesting because uh, of co- I, how did you find a self-publishing company? Or did they find you? They found me. So they awesome. found me. So you I- were already a blogger before then? Yes. Yeah. So I was a blogger. I started my blog in, um, 2011 or 2012 and somewhere in between 2011 and maybe like 2014 or 15 uh page street contacted me and we started working together um i had always wanted to write a book but it seemed like such i had no idea where to start so what was interesting was i was already in the process just by publishing content online you're already doing the work you know and then with social media people end up seeing you and that's how that started and uh yeah the fun process fun it's a lot of work a lot of work um but yeah it's good because then you have something you have something physical to hold on to when it when it's done and something to pass on too that's the other thing oh there's nothing they can invent an audible they can invent something that shows the the book in your eyes but like reading a book An actual There's book. There's nothing. An actual book. It, you know, it goes back to what you were saying earlier about the story you were telling me about the dough and that a baker would come and 
you know, take yeah. the dough and bake. I love stories like that. I love the old school stories. I love watching old school grandmas on, on YouTube making pasta, baking bread. That is what we need to preserve. If they ever, you know, write books or whatever, that is the stuff that we need to save mm-hmm. because um, it's so important, I think, in terms of methods and just preserving history and passing it on because, you know, old school, they don't write anything down. It just, no, it, is. it is. You mix it, it's done when it's done. But now, now I understand that why my grandma used to tell me, I don't need to measure. Yeah, and I started yeah. school. I started cooking in school at that time, so everything was by the gram. So, of course, grandma, of course. really, nonna, you don't have to measure. Yeah. Are you kidding me? You have to measure. No, no, I don't need to measure. I feel it with my hands. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but that's the thing. You're forced to be really in tune with whatever you're making. You're 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 forced to use your head. And now you know we're in an age where there's an app for everything. There's a calculator for everything. Somebody else did. You know, you really it's that common sense. You really have to really get in there and do it. And that's why when teaching, it's great. You know, those classes you learn by doing. You learn by getting your hands in there. I learned a lot by teaching. A lot. I yeah. Remember. I learned teaching and I learned, uh, you know, how to understand the moment and be with the flow. I was just going to say, you understand people, right? Because yeah. that, that's where you're connecting. You understand how they think, you know, in mm-hmm. a real life situation. You know, is this, is this really going to work? Is this method really practical for, for someone who works 10 hours a day? Like those specific examples. Absolutely. You learn a lot. The, do, you, do you use any particular scoring tool? Just because you are in Brooklyn and I know that Tyler lives in Brooklyn and he was on the show at the beginning of the podcast last year as well. Did you say Tyler? Yeah, Tyler, Tyler from Wire Monkey. Yeah. Yeah, Wire Monkey. Right. So I have his um I have his scoring tool and he's just sent me his new one, the arc. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, cool. I haven't I've used seen that one. I'm curious to understand that one. Yeah, I have it. I'll let you know. Um, I haven't used that, but I got to tell you, when I first started, I used a plain serrated knife, a yeah. small serrated steak knife. And guess what? Bread looked really good. I didn't yeah. need anything fancy. I Beautiful ear, a whole bit. Um, so I've used that. I've used a thick, heavy-duty razor blade from Home Depot. I guess that would okay. be like, um, your, Bunnings, like yeah. your bun- yeah. Bunnings, right? How do you know? I love because I, I love Australia, by the way. Do you know okay. I used to live there? I thought so. That's why I was searching about you. And that's why I asked yeah. you, I think you are in Australia on one of the emails. Uh-uh. So I'm in New York. I would love to be in Australia. I lived there. I mean, you're talking 20 years ago, long okay. time ago. But you look very young. Um, thanks, but I'm not. No, <laughs> I'm uh, 39. Um, I live there. And let me tell you, you ever have that feeling where you're, home but it's not your home Mm -hmm. that's how I feel towards Australia and I think um I don't know what it is I mean I know it's it's the nature and uh, the culture the people like it just just loved it and so when I came back to New York I missed it and that's how I stumbled upon the blog fig jam and lime cordial right and she's still baking the bread so it was that longing to sort of stay connected and through her blog she taught me this skill Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for her and her blog and her passion and her genuine, you know, approach to things, my career with bread, my book would not even exist. So when I look back in retrospect where I was at that point in my life, I'm like, wow, who would have thought that all of that would culminate to this point all of these years later? You know, this is no overnight thing. This Mm -hmm. is. No. You're talking oh, long time. They say it's a beautiful saying. No over, overnight success takes forty years. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so exactly. you're almost there. You're almost there. But yeah. I mean, you had your success you. and you still having your success. As I said before, you holding on to your uh, how do you say consistency. You're very generous. And I and I was saying, and she sparkled your passion for bread, you are going to sparkle and you have sparkled. So, uh, so many other bakers, you need to be aware of that. Just give yourself yeah, applause because you have inspired for sure thousands of people, if not millions, you know, I don't know. You must have sold, even if you sell 10 copies of bread, even if you changed one person's life, that's big success already. That actually is really um, true, what you said. 
little victories, Mm -hmm. little victories, Mm -hmm. little, little moments. Um, those, those are important. You know, they all add up to bigger moments, but, but yeah. Yeah. Why declare a carrot? Um, when I first started my blog, I wanted a name that had like a little spunk to it. You know, Mm -hmm. I wanted the blog to be a little bit different offering, not just your run of the mill tips, but like the real tips that people do. Going back to what I was saying before, like watching the YouTube videos, the, the real home bakers, what are those weird things that you do that you're too embarrassed to share with other people? That's what I want to know. Mm-hmm. And those are the things that I like to share about myself, like just, you know, stuff like that. So that's where the word clever came in and carrot, just because I gotta be honest with you, I like the way it sounded. So <laughs> well, I just kind of put it together. I think it's very catchy. Nobody can forget it. Right. I can't Thanks. forget it. It's easy. I, uh, sometimes I for, I forgot your last name. I said, mm-hmm. oh, let me check on the email now. How do I how do I find? Oh, the clever carrot. Oh, there she comes. Right, right. Comes up. You see. So I think it's very catchy. And um, right. yeah, that's it. I'm very happy. Thank you for being on the show. You've been an amazing guest. I think you shared a lot of personal experiences and uh, a lot of wisdom which is great thank you so much would you like to share your outlet please before you go um which one like my social media and sure so i'm yeah okay so uh theclevercarrot.com for all of my blog posts um you could subscribe there to my newsletter you'll get um a weekly or a monthly newsletter with some personal info plus a new recipe or or a tutorial whatever i'm in the mood to do um so that's the blog and then uh, instagram at the clever carrot easy enough um mm-hmm. books wherever books are sold amazon yes. local bookstore support local um youtube oh my goodness i have a youtube channel that that's awesome. that is like my side project it's, it's really basic it's um it's where I like to just like have fun and it's no frills. We need um, to keep going. Getting there, man. I need, I need people to, <laughs> to help me. Jeez. It's like so much to do get and not enough. To hold the camera. Get, oh, get yeah, to be your cameraman. To, yeah. And then they'll take it and then they'll start, you know, trying to <laughs> play on it. For sure. Ah, mm. Do everything. So yeah. Thank you for being on the show, Emily. It's Thank been you. Amazing. Uh, 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 I, I can't wait to meet you in person. Hopefully when the gate will open again and I'll be in New York to find some friends. Would you like to share the, the name of the restaurant as well? Some people can come and see the restaurant as well. Yeah, absolutely. The restaurant's named Spolia. Um, mm. And I'll spell it because um, that's the hardest. F- F-O-G-L-I-A, spoliarestaurant.com. Um, what is it located? It's located on the Upper East Side in New York. Actually, before you go, sorry. How's business going on in, in New York? That's, uh, come. Let me tell you something. This has been the most wild ride ever. So uh, let's see. In somewhere, it's a blur between March and April or whatever. We were shut down completely. Um, and then summertime, so that's June, July for us, we were able to open outdoor seating. But the thing is, we didn't have outdoor seating. We're not an outdoor restaurant. So we had to make the outdoor seating. So my cousin came and built us a deck right off of the sidewalk. So if you were a corner restaurant, right? So we built a deck into the road, um, a beautiful deck. And we put all of our tables out there. We built a huge canopy tent over, string lights, made it really as comfortable and as welcoming as possible. And then it rained every single night, every single night this summer. Let me tell you something, that rain and that rain, it was like the storm elements every night. I mean, cause we actually didn't have a canopy tent in the beginning, we just had umbrellas. We thought, oh, umbrellas, great, it's fine. Until they started blowing down the street. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So we're like running after and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> cause Sorry you're not prepared. No, but you have to, you have to laugh because this is just, you, you can't even make this up. So, um, that's when we're like, okay, we got to build those big, like catering tent canopies. Um, so we did that, that helped with the rain and then now it's cold and it's still raining and nobody wants to sit, sit outside and we don't have heaters because they're all sold out all over the world and we can't even get one. So we can't allow them inside. We can only operate 25% 
capacity on the inside, which is like the staff. It's not, it's not, it's, yeah, it's basically covering the staff. It is basically covering the staff. So it is extremely difficult. It is extremely, you never know what you're going to deal with every day. Mm -hmm. different elements every day the weather we had no idea how that was going to play into it um but let me tell you the staff is incredible they do a kick-ass job every single night just pulling their weight doing what they have to do everybody's a real community a real family actually at the restaurant and um well done for praise them i hope they are listening to this one or they will listen to this one in the future they have to know i mean just it's it's really they're doing such a great job and um yeah you know everybody's living minute to minute nobody knows mm -hmm. nobody knows what's next and well, that's gonna be called COVID-19 has been a very good yeah. life lesson for many people it is it is and it, yet to be revealed yes so. grounded many people and uh, opened the eyes on the true values of life to many as yeah. well for sure. I think Absolutely. it's a bless, honestly. I know that many people have lost their life. I'm very sorry yeah. and compassionate yeah. about it. I feel your pain, but yeah. we needed it. We really did need it. Yeah. To become yeah. humans again. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much you. again, uh, Emily. Thank you. Thank you. This is really, really nice. Thank you. Goodbye.